when Occupy Wall Street first emerged, you were very hopeful that it would become uh, a movement that would help make some of the changes that you write about in your book. A year later, um, they don't seem to be very effective anywhere around the country. What happened? One of the reasons they, I think they have failed is they were instinctively opposed to organization. Capitalism breeds dishonest men. These are the men that you're calling dishonest. Do you know who Ben Bernanke is? No, I do not. Do you know who Brian Moynihan is? No. How about Jamie Dimon? No. How about Kim Kardashian? Yes. Who's Kim Kardashian? The chick with the fat ass. Do you want me to tell you who, who Ben Bernanke is? Yeah, tell me. He's, he's the chairman of the Feds. are having an effect. Absolutely not. An effect the way how I get to my building, yes. An effect on how Washington is going to conduct their policies, no. You should be in Washington, not on Wall Street. You are a... I've been here already close a week. I smell that. What's the message that you would give to the 1%? I'd say bite me. And what do you think they'd say back to you? They'd probably say screw you. And then we'd be right here where we are now? Probably. PROGRESS! Uh, they, they wanted to be spontaneous. They saw what had happened, what they thought of uh, uh, the corporate world, which had brought us to all these problems. They didn't want that kind of strong organization. But you can't have societal change without organization. Good evening, Ape Nation. It is Monday, October 4th, 2021. Uh, excuse my voice tonight. I did a lot of screaming last night at the Patriots game. Uh, but I don't want to get into that any further than I have to. I do want to talk about this gentleman right here. His name is Joseph Stieglitz. In case you don't know, I pulled this clip from uh, YouTube. It's entitled, Why Occupy Wall Street Failed. It's from October 18th of 2012. But I thought it was something interesting because I consider the apes Occupy Wall Street 2.0. And I'm going to try to prove that fact to you with everything that I bring into this video tonight. Real quick, I got a comment last night from the video. It was, it's actually been a couple comments that people have said the videos are too long. And my only response to that is, for instance, in last night's video, talking about Kathy Wood and Dr. Michael Barry, two of the probably most prolific investors right now, no matter which way you look at how they are approaching um, what they are doing with their money, uh, they're two of the most prolific people in the field, and I feel like if you truly are looking for financial freedom, which I know most of us are, if you don't have 15 minutes to give them your full divided attention, in my opinion, that's not the way to look at it. Look at it as you're getting at least 10 minutes of education, hearing from the actual people what their words are. I know my commentary really doesn't need to be in there. But it is important to hear what they have to say, I think, if you're truly looking for financial freedom. So that's my only answer to that. With that being said, I'm going to try to keep the videos under 12 minutes going forward if I can. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, cue the speeder. <laughs> You just said that on camera. This going viral. Guys, thank you so much for crushing it and getting me to 1,000 subscribers. If I haven't earned your subscription yet, this is the way. All right, guys, let's jump right into this. So apparently, this whole controversy started over this video that came out last week. It was September 28th, 2021. But I'm not going to tell you what he said. I'll let the guru explain. There's no money exchange here, so we're, we're good. I can talk like this. Okay. One, somebody brought up that you know, like this is a movement you know, for us to fix Wall Street and everything. I don't know if anybody got the memo, but like, I'm not a part of a movement. I'm not a fucking, I don't hold fucking signs up. <laughs> I don't fucking chant. I don't have fucking bongos and maracas. I don't do that shit. You think I'm going to be standing in front of a fucking building fucking saying the same thing some asshole saying with a microphone. I don't do that shit. Um, this is investing, this is Wall Street, this is grown-up shit, we're here to make money, that's all it is, there's no movement. You know, as far as like, you know, this being a movement and we're here to fix things and hold people accountable, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. We're living in a country that can't even hold an election and we're going to be able to have a fucking sign. You, my thing is this, like, 
even back in the days when people were doing the Wall Street bets and they were doing the apes, 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 I was, I was fucking tormenting people because, you know, I never, I never understood the whole embracing. I understand that it kind of like everybody was like, you know, you know, we're an ape. No, that's not the you know, no. Let me tell you something. The nervousness, whatever, and then we become something that is not to ridicule anymore. Then that's when the that's when things are gonna change. I've been here already close to week. I smell that. You know, but as far as like, you know. All right, so let me cut him off here. In the introduction you saw in that video, the gentleman that was there and he was interviewing people, compare that to what we're doing right now. Do you think people are taking us more seriously than they did with Occupy Wall Street when actually people occupied the street? I do. I think this is completely different and he's way off here on this. And here's, here's, here's my argument for that. Uh, in Occupy Wall Street, let's go back to what the guy said when he uh, was asked if this is making a yeah, difference. I'm thirsty. Do you think the protests are having an effect? Absolutely not. An effect the way how I get to my building? Yes. An effect on how Washington is going to conduct their policies? No. You should be in Washington, not on Wall Street. You are a press representative for the... Okay. So what he just said there is, is it having an effect on me getting to work? Yes. As far as anything else on Wall Street, you're on the Wall Street. He's basically saying on the wrong street. You should actually be in Washington. And I agree with him that on that wholeheartedly because they are allowing this to continue. But compared to the guys that are being interviewed in this video, what is the big difference? Yeah, a lot of us still don't know what's totally going on. A lot of us aren't even really that well versed in the market itself yet. A lot of us are still learning and there are now all these tools available through social media uh, just, you know, as far as TA goes and learning about options and the difference between ETFs and uh, mutual funds and commodities. There's just so much information that they didn't they weren't able to possess that type of organization. And that's what Joseph Stieglitz said in the video is they weren't organized they all kind of just jumped into this thing and everyone had their own agenda whereas what we're doing right now this is completely different because we are controlling cash flow none of these people were able to do that like the guy said he had trouble getting to work but as far as making money he was still making money where those two roads split and Occupy Wall Street goes this way, and the ape movement goes this way, is the financial part of it. We are able, essentially as a movement, to affect where money is flowing. And that is the biggest difference. And that's why I say we are a movement that's 10 times stronger than Occupy Wall Street because we have effect on the financial aspect where these guys didn't. All they could do was protest in the street. This, these keyboards and phones, and the actual control of currency is what makes us so much more potent as a force. So guys, I'm gonna actually leave it there for tonight. I just wanna say one more thing that I noticed when I was going back over these videos. First and foremost, I noticed in the all the pictures and video and B-roll that I went through, you know, no one was talking about any tribalization. No one was separating people. There was no segregation. There was no one yelling about color or creed or religion or cultural background. And, you know, another thing that I think about this movement that's so different is this community and how diversified it is where there's people from all over the world and I've mentioned this before, but so many different backgrounds, religions and cultures and countries. And it's not out in the open. And I know Tim Poole says this a lot of times that the reason, another reason why Occupy fell apart was 
the media started to push this narrative of it's actually due to race and gender and all these biases. And that's what another factor that helped to push people apart um, from this movement. And, you know, as I look towards what we're doing right now, maybe the fact that we are only doing this through a screen and monitors and using keyboards and phones, I think we kind of insulate from the media being able to pick us apart and have us going at each other because they don't know anything about our demographics. They don't know any of us. They know some maybe YouTubers and maybe people on Reddit and social media. But as far as the 4 million apes who are invested in AMC, they can't use that narrative against us. And that's another powerful thing that I think we have to our advantage now as opposed to 2008. And we should run with that. And with that being said, I'm going to wrap up with this. I hope everyone understands that, again, this isn't an attack on anyone. It's just disputing someone's argument. And everyone has their own opinions on it. I just think that that opinion is wrong and that we are powerful. And we are going to be what brings about change. And I'm going to leave you guys with William Wallace and what he said right before uh, his first battle against the English and his speech and hopefully that will get you motivated and pumped up I know when I just watched it to bring it into the clip it got me pumped up so I'm gonna leave it there guys for tonight uh, AMC was down about four percent today but again I'm not micro analyzing the charts anymore I'm just done with that until they start covering their positions they can't have my shares and that's the way I'm gonna leave it this is Ape Nation I'm the Massalorian and I'm out All right. Fight and you may die. Run and you'll live. At least a while. I'm dying in your beds many years from now. Would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives? But they'll never take our freedom!